Hello guys and welcome to another Blender tutorial. So today I'm going to be showing you how to use an instancing method to make really easy chainmail in Blender. We're going to be using Blender 2.9. Now this method is pretty cool, it can give you some pretty good results really easily, but the only downside is, is because we're instancing this little segment of chain on the faces of the cylinder here, where the faces get kind of narrower, we get a little bit of intersection, and where they get really far apart, the chain kind of pulls apart. So it is limited, but if you're kind of just doing this for a very mild animation or just um, a still render, we're not too close to the chainmail, that issue should be relatively um, unnoticed. So I'm going to go step by step how to do this. Now this is not a rigging tutorial, even though I am going to be rigging in this tutorial. And um, this is more just showing you the workflow and method to um, making this chain mail. So I hope you guys learn something from this. And by the way, the principles from this little tutorial can be used for many different applications in Blender. So if you've never done this sort of instancing stuff, go ahead, keep watching this tutorial. I think you guys are really gonna enjoy it. So let's get started. Okay, so to better demonstrate this, I'm just gonna be using the upper body of this male character here as an example. And I'm just gonna be using the left arm of the character here to um, add a section of chain mail. Now, if you don't have um, a model doesn't matter, it's just you can still learn the principle from this. And if you do have your own character you want to follow along, add some chainmail or a sleeve or something to the arms, that'll be fantastic. So let's go ahead and um, I'm just going to hide this collection here just so I have a nice empty scene to start with. So let's actually start by making the chains themselves. So to get started, we're going to make sure we're in a front orthographic view. And by the way, let me just enable my screencast keys here just so you guys can see the keys that I'm pressing. So in my front orthographic view, I'm going to go Shift A, go down to your mesh, up to your mesh options, and we're going to go down here and just select the torus option. And we're going to come here to the add torus options, and let's come here to the major segments. And let's go with something like 11. Now I wouldn't recommend anything under 10, it starts to look a little bit dodgy. But if you do bring that amount lower, you will get better performance, because this can obviously get very high poly very quickly. I'm going to come here to the minor segments. I'm going to make that 7. So just 11 and 7 like that. Um, those two values will be fine. We can just come here to add torus. Just drop that down. We're done with that. And now with this guy, we're just going to tab into edit mode. And with all of these vertices selected, we're just going to hit Alt and S and just scale this guy in along the normals just to make it a bit of a skinnier torus. So just something like that. You definitely don't want something very thick like a donut, it's just not going to work. So you do need something around about like this. And once again, if you do want to add more segments, go ahead. But just for performance issues, I'm going to keep it as it is. So let's tab back into object mode. I'm going to go to object here with this torus selected and just enable shade smooth. It just looks a little bit better. And then what we're going to do with this guy still selected, we're going to hit free to go into our right orthographic view. And in our right orthographic view, we're going to tab into edit mode and we're going to go R with all of this selected. We're going to rotate it about that much. We're not going to be too specific here because we can always come in and adjust it. This is a pretty forgivable um, uh, method. So we're just going to come with something like this. And then we're going to go, while well, we're still in our right orthographic view, Shift D to duplicate. Bring one up like this. And then we're going to go R to rotate it in like that. Like this will be fine. Okay. Go into your front orthographic view by hitting one. And we're going to go G, X. And we're going to move this chain over just like that. So it's about there but we don't want these two intersecting. So just like that, it should be fine. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna tab out of edit mode. And remember, we can always adjust these later. We now wanna go Shift A, and we wanna add in a cylinder. Now with this cylinder here, we'll just leave it as it is. It's 32 um, vertices here. And what we need to do is I'm gonna quickly bring back that collection, so the, the character or the upper male body here. And I want to think about where I want this chainmail to be. So I know I want the chainmail sleeve to be from the wrist here up to the upper arm here, kind of where the armpit is. So what I'm going to do is this cylinder selected. And if you have a character that you're trying to add sleeves to, just hit S with that um, cylinder selected to scale it down. And in this case, I'm trying to scale it down to about the thickness or diameter of the upper arm here. So I'm going to go with something about there. And then I'm going to go S, Z to scale it along the Z. And I'm trying to create the length of the arm here, so about there to there. It doesn't have to be perfect, it's just something like that. In fact, if I move it here and I rotate it, you can see it's a bit too long, so I'll just scale it down even more into Z. So just something like that should be fine. Then I'm gonna go Control A or Command A and apply the scale. So there we have that. Now we need to tab into edit mode 
and I'm just going to hit Z going to wireframe so I can better see things because or I can even just come and just hide the mannequin here just so we don't see that in the way. You can hover over here with your cursor and then if you hit Control R you can see a yellow line appearing but if you roll your middle mouse button up you can see all of these segments are getting rolled in. So we're going to roll them in till all of the faces look square. Okay, So get this roughly as close as you can. So you can just eye it till they look like squares. So that looks about right. So now when I double click, you can see we have these squares in here and they're pretty close to almost perfectly square. So that's fine. Then we're gonna to go to your face select option here. Click on the top face, hit X and delete that face. And we also don't need the bottom face. So select that one, hit X and delete face. So now we can do the fun part. So let's tab out of edit mode into object mode. And let's select the chain mail here. And the chain mail, we're going to hit S to scale that guy down. And we're going to scale it down. In fact, hit Z, go into wireframe. We want to scale it down till the chain here, one of these links, is about the same size as one of these faces here. Okay, So something like that. Then I'm going to go Control A and make sure to apply the scale for that guy as well. So you can see now at the moment, it's right here in the middle, but that's okay. We actually do want it to be in the same origin point as this cylinder here. So we're going to select this chain length, this bit of chain. Holding in shift, we're going to select the main cylinder. And then we're going to go control P and we're going to go set parent to object. Now make sure to do the object only, not to keep transform. So now um, we can grab the cylinder here, which is going to be our instancer. We're going to go to our object data properties with the cylinder selected. You want to go down here to instancing. You should see this if you have Blender 2.83 and higher. We're going to come down here and when you drop down to instancing, we're going to come here to the option called vertices. Now you could use faces, but I prefer vertices. So if you click on vertices, you're going to see this is what happens. And that looks pretty cool, but it's not quite right. So what we need to do is click on this button here that says align to vertex normals. And there we go. It is now um, in the right direction. But we do get a little bit of intersection here. So what we're going to do is we're going to select that piece of chain here. We're going to tab into edit mode. Hit A to select everything. And now we can just move it around just a little bit. So let's go G. Hit G and then Y. And just move it back a little bit like that. Just so we don't get that intersection. And there we go. We can see that has now fixed that issue. So if you go G, Y, and you move it along the Y, you can see kind of that expanding. So just adjust it just a little bit and you can move the segments around just to get something that works. But you can see here, um, this is pretty close. In fact, that's really good. So here you can see we have some really super easy chain mail, right? Now, if you do grab this piece of chain here and you go G and you move it off to the side, you can see that's what's happening. So um, just keep it there where it is. In fact, if you select the cylinder itself, which is the instancer, and you hit G and you move it, that piece of chain that's parented will follow along anyway. So that's good. Now we have that. Now, by the way, while we still have that cylinder selected, under the instancing option here, just also disable render. So you don't see that instancer in the render. And if you want to, you can also select viewport. So you don't see it in the viewport. But for now, because we need to edit that cylinder, I'm gonna make sure viewport stays enabled. Okay, so that's all good. So let's go and bring in our character. So I'm gonna click there on that um, collection. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna select the cylinder here. And in my front view, I'm going to go G. I'm going to move this guy up to where the arm is here. And then I'm going to rotate it in the front of graphic view. And I'm just going to move it by hitting G. Place it here on the arm. Then I'm going to go to my top of graphic view by hitting 7. And then I'm going to rotate it in, just lining it up with the arm. So that's really cool. But now it's where it gets um, a bit more interesting. So we're going to tap into edit mode. And in edit mode, just going to wireframe. We're going to hit A to select everything. So you can see all of the faces are selected. And now we can go Alt S to scale it in along the normals, make it a little bit skinnier. So Alt S, bringing that in. In this case, not too much, just a little bit. And then we need to go to our face select option here, our edge select option here. And we're going to go Shift Alt and we're going to click on this edge loop here. And that's going to loop select this edge over here. We're going to enable proportional editing. And then if we go Alt S and we scale in along the normals and we roll our middle mouse button, we can control the fall off and we can also move our mouse to kind of bring that in. So I'm going to scale this down around the wrist 
just a little bit more like that. Now one of the downsides with this, you are going to see that the way it's populating them now here, they're intersecting because it's actually basing um, the placement of these length, these links on everywhere there is a, um, a polygon. So you can see that polygons here are getting closer and closer. That's why the chain lengths are getting closer and closer. We're over here. They still look okay. In fact, if we selected an edge here and we scale it up, you can see we have the opposite problem where they pull apart. So this is one of the limiting things about this technique. But overall, you can use it pretty well um, to a certain degree. And you know, especially if you're going to be seeing the camera is going to be far away from the character, um, you might not notice it so much. You can also go to vertex select here, and then just select individual vertices and just kind of pull them around, just to kind of adjust your chain mail like that. So like I said, um, it is limiting in that way, but with certain applications, you could get away with this. In fact, you don't even have to use this method for chain mail. It can be useful for all sorts of other things. So now, for example, say for example, we wanted to um, rig this along with the, the mesh of the character. So I'm just going to quickly add an example rig. I'm going to go Shift-A. Just simply add in armature. And I'm just going to go to my armature settings, go to viewport display, and just go in front so I can see the bone. Then in edit mode of this bone selected, I'm just going to go E to shoot it up to the armpit here. And then I'm going to go and just make a super quick and dirty arm here by extruding this bone up to the middle of the arm here. Just placing it roughly here and in E to extrude another one. Just making a quick and dirty rig. This is not a rigging tutorial. Just so you guys have an example. Then extrude out the hand and I'm just going to go into my pose mode. Just select the hand here. Go to my bone properties. I'm just going to um, untick the form. And I'm also going to untick um, the form for this big one here. Then I'm going to select the hand bone. Back in edit mode, I'm just going to go Alt P, just um, disconnect the bone. Alt P, just going to clear that bone. So now it's separated, and I'm going to go back into pose mode and select this hand bone, holding and shift, select the lower arm, control shift C, and I'm just going to give that guy a quick inverse um, kinematic. Grab the lower arm, go to the constraints, and just bump that chain length up to two so it influences these two bones. To now have a simple dirty rig here, I'm going to quickly go into pose mode. So now all I have to do is select the actual um, cylinder that's um, instancing the chain, holding and shift select the character mesh itself, and then while I'm still holding and shift, I'm going to select the armature last, and then I'm going to go control P, and let's just go with automatic weights. Now if I select the hand, the, um, the rig here, go into pose mode, and select the hand control here, G to move, you can now see not only are we controlling the character, right, but we're also um, controlling the, the, the chain here. Now at the moment, don't pay any attention to that because, um, um, just like I said, this is not really a character tutorial. So I'm just going to disable, I'll just put the mirror below the armature. Okay. Like I said, this is not a, um, in fact, I'm just going to disable the mirror like that. So this is just simply showing you how to go about making um, chain mail in Blender. So this is just one technique. Like I said, it has a lot of limitations. But now you can kind of see what's happening here, right? That's pretty cool. So yeah, I hope you guys are able to find some practical uses for this. And if you do, um, you know, show me what you've made on Instagram. Like I said, I said in the beginning as well, I will be making this little example scene here available on my Patreon. If you guys want to check that out in the description below. I'll see you guys next time for another Blender tutorial.